Alrighty, it is time for January Ink Flight. Look at the size of this small little package. Oh, let's start opening this puppy up. Oh my goodness. Alrighty, there is the information sheet. We have a lot of stuff. There are the seven inks. Oh, that's so cute. Please ink responsibly. Let's read about this sticker. The please ink responsibly sticker were made by the other Tom, inside joke, between us Toms, at Sugar Turtle Studios. This is so cute. Wow, that's an, it's such a, a departure from all the other um, ink flights. The last one we got was December's ink flight. And that was this one. It's the Chitalula Claws. This. And then we get this really minimal ink flight. Please ink responsibly. I do not want to have my hands inked all over that, but you know, you do what you gotta do. That's, that's what it is. You do what you gotta do. Alrighty, what is this? There's something in here. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna put this away. This is actually something I wanted. And I got it. Okay, this is the Sailor Dipton ink and dip pen. It's the Sailor Dipton. Um, the seventh ink in this month's flight is contained with, oh, this is, so there's six inks here. And this is the seventh ink. And Sailor gets into the Shimmer Ink game with three new colors, Coral Humming, Ice Dance, and Mellow Forest. Each ink flight box contains one of these three colors. So I'm gonna get one of those three in here. The 10 millimeter dye-based ink has a shimmer that changes color based on every angle you view it. Oh my goodness. The ink is not recommended for use with fountain pens and is meant to be used with the included dip pen. And I've heard that about these inks as well. They're not to be used, not to go in the fountain pen. I probably need to um, label this somehow. The Hokuro dip pen has a clear concave barrel. Let's open this up. Oh, look how cute it is. Really nice packaging, Sailor. And if you remember um, the Hokuro, the Hokuro Depends, I have, I actually have two of them already. This is the one millimeter and I got them in different colors because I wanted to distinguish them. And this is the fine. So that's the one millimeter and that's the fine. And now one of the ones I wanted to get was this clear, shiny, glittery thing. And one of the things that if you don't know about the, the Sailor Hokuro Depends is, that it comes upside down, so it has a storage space. Let's get this out of there, come on. It has a storage space for the nib that you just turn upside down and you start writing with it. These inks come with a Fude nib. The nib is bent. There we go, the nib is bent up. So that is cool and i actually wanted this barrel i was i had this in my cart somewhere and i wasn't going to get it and now i got it um the hokuro pen has a clear concave barrel which sparkles suspended throughout the steel dip nib has a fude nib which can be used to write calligraphy the pen tip can be stored by pulling it from the barrel i just all that stuff i just said uh, yeah so we are going to i guess i guess we're gonna definitely use this dip pen to ink up this color. And what color, which one did I get? I got Coral Humming, I think. Oh my goodness. It's like getting out the diamond ink vent stuff. I got Coral Humming. Oh, look at that. Look how gorgeous that is. Oh, that, oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna, that's number seven. So we get six, and let me open this up. Right up there. And 
And the other six are, I love how different they're doing it. This is a, a cool way to showcase them. Let's get to talking about them. Over six years of ink flights, we've continued to explore the ever-expanding universe of ink colors known as Colorverse. I don't have any Colorverse inks. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. And now I have six. Oh my goodness. Um, in this Korea special series, Colorverse highlights the famous festivals, architecture, and history of Korean culture. Plus, there is one color from the Kingdom series honoring 500 years, whoa, of Korean history. What in the world? Oh my goodness. That's, I love, I just love how you guys think about this. It's, it's a very dedicated way to, to explore inks for us who get the, um, the ink vents, the ink vents. Don't confuse the two, okay? Dying mind was one thing, this is ink flight, come on. Um, we get to explore inks through these small samples and we get to, my sample collection is growing majorly, absolute majorly. And I love that because then I just get to have a taste of it and then I get to have the bottles that I want. And this is interesting because now I have a bottle of this gorgeousness. Okay, let's get these in color order. All right, let's get the book out, put some stuff away, and let's get the book out so we can start swatching. And I'm going to swatch these, all of them, with my Roar and Klinger plastic nib. I'm going to swatch it. This is fairly dirty because I've been swatching um, darker colors, especially the last month's ink. Um, and let's get out Okay, I'm going to put this right here because that's what I do. So I can see the colors or see the wording as I am swatching. And this time I'll remember to read the stuff out, not write the stuff. What is under my foot? Oh my goodness, my foot is sliding under my table. Okay, let's get to this first one. This first one is called Tangerine. need you guys to go up just a touch. I'm going to put a little bit. I'm going to do this first. It's a pretty, really pretty color. And I write color with a U. It's the English spelling. I've always I've written it like that. And I have to remember not to include the U in color anymore. For at least for, at least for this. Let's go tangerine. I'm going to do something that I didn't do before, but I really miss having. And I'm going to see how it works. I just love having the blob of color. Alrighty, that's the first one. It's a really um, very saturated color for writing and I love that it's a it's a yellowish orange <clears throat> that um, works really well my thing stopped st sticking so we're just gonna start using this instead oops <clears throat> and what this is is a Muji tape dispenser that I now use as a sample ink holder Alrighty, this one is called Curious, and, and see, that's what I did again. I did it, you guys gotta remind me. Okay, so for Tangerine, inspired by the vibrant orange color of the famous Jeju Tangerine. Oh, no, no wonder, oh, it really does read beautiful, beautifully rather. I'm gonna put this over here, so. Come on. Alrighty, next up is, what is that? Next up we have Haho Mask. Inspired by ceremonial mask originating from the 12th century Goreo period, this ink is a tan brown with slight expressions of gray and orange. 
What the flip? Okay, Howl Mask. Let's see what you got. Wow, it looks like nothing is going on the nib, but there's something on the nib. Definitely brown and definitely light. Interesting how it goes. This multi-chromatic shading ink expresses the light of the buildings reflected in the Gumgang River from Korea's longest pedestrian bridge. So Gung Bridge. It doesn't really give you any color that it has. Multi-chromatic shading, but no, it doesn't. There's no, there's no idea of the hue. Although you can see there's blue in there. Okay, reflected, it does say reflected in the, in the river, so there is that. So it is a blue. It's not a blue I would gravitate towards, but let's give it some breathing room to show off its its qualities. Alrighty. Next up is King's Road. So this one is King's Road. And King's Road is a bright olive tone color. This ink captures the landscape scene from the Samdo leading to I am not even going to pronounce that whole. Gunjongjom. I think that's how you say it. Probably totally butchering the name. I apologize. Oh, how pretty. Really light. It's so light that it's running out. Running out before we start. These are so light. I wonder if they're meant to be this light. And I'm looking at this other one that's supposed to be, um, supposed to be chromatic. This one here. Okay, this is, it's almost like, hmm. Let me just finish. All right, the next one is Dokdo. Dokdo. And this one is a clear, a bright clear turquoise color. This ink is inspired by the freshness of the East Sea where Dokdo Islets are located. Okay. Really is coming in turquoise on there too. Wow. Compared to the rest of them, jeez Louise, this is vibrant. Oh, see, I wrote the R, the U, rather, instead of an R. I can see where my favorite is so far. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow, beautiful color. Amazing. So you can see, because I'm not a, so far, the first one and the last one are pulling in for favorites. Alrighty, next, the last one is Kingdom Jeonjuk Hasong. This cold, this one is it? Jeonjuk. This cold, dark, blue-black ink expresses the humiliation faced by the surrender of the 16th king, Injo, of the Chosun dynasty. Okay, cannot get over how much, I don't know if you can you'll be able to pick it, how much that ink is coating the edge of that vial. That is a thing. Oh, kind of like that. Okay, 
I'm gonna have to use this to write this one because I do not know how to spell this. That's because it's a really long name, but it's a beautiful ink. Absolutely beautiful. Now, this one, this is the last one. This is the shimmer ink. And this ink, I'm gonna see if it has any information on coral humming. It has a shimmer that changes color based on the angle you view it in. All right. We will write with it. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually put it down with, because it's a dip pen. I'm going to put that little swatch down first. And then I might try my hand at writing with it for the name. It's like a rose gold thing going on. I like myself a rose gold. And I'm going to use this, and I, I'm just not sure how it's going to go. Because I don't do calligraphy. And I must say, the one other thing that you get... Oops, that's a bit much. The other thing that you get with this um, Hokoro nib is you get the feeder that goes with it. They, I think they should have shipped that with it all along. So this is... Sailor, what is it called? I want to get it right. Sailor Dipton Mini Ink. And the name of it is Coral Humming. And the effect of this with using the food nib i'm not going to see because i don't know how to do calligraphy but i will practice with it but let's put some of that down so we can get the full effect and before i finish let me do my my little flourish okay oh i forgot how, did I, how could I forget? I forgot to do this one. Duh. And then I'll do a, um, a sort of close up. Wow. Different sort of ink flight. They are, they are, I mean, this is number 85, so they have to change things up, right? some close-ups. So first we have the one called Tangerine. It's af named after the famous Jeju Tangerine. I actually like the color and I'm not sure. It reads really beautifully light but in writing you can see it and if I can see a light color it's most likely going to be used in my journal. This is how I, I know the which I'm going to Keep a color or not keep a color. Um, Haho mask is that brownish one, which is almost like a, a a tan brown. It's really special, actually. I like I like how it's showing up here. The next one is um, Ong Bridge, and this is the one that's showing. I was hoping it would show up, but it's multi-chromatic shading you can see that happening here it really is i love chromatic shader there's lots of shading around this pink coming out there pinkish purple coming out there sweet then we have king's road which to me is a kind of like a regular run-of-the-mill regular it's nice 
it's very nice. I don't know if it's a color I would choose for my journal, but writing somewhere else, probably. Transcribing, it'll probably be going a pen to transcribe. But the one that really had me going is this one, Doctor. That is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And you can see some of that shading coming in at the edges. Just beautiful. And then the Zhongzhuk Hassong. This is a... Uh, um, this is the clear, no, it's, what is it? The cold, dark. It looks definitely cold and dark. Cold, dark, blue, black. Let's put my fingers over there so you can see it. So blue, black ink. It's really nice, actually. I would choose this one. I'm not a fan of the darker blues that just don't hold any saturation. They're just kind of like muted. That's quite nice. And then the Sailor Dipton. It's really pretty. It's absolutely, you can see some of the shimmer coming in there. And it's a peachy, orangey thing happening. So I decided to do some swatches on my regular swatch, which is the coloring paper. Um, I usually ink up a rhodia. I don't usually show you. But I've decided to do some swatches on three colors. So that's coloring, rhodia, and then the Nimesin paper. That's this one here. And for the first ink, this is Color First um, Tangerine. I don't notice that much of a difference between the three. They look both equally saturated. Color balances is across the board. Don't see much of a difference. Let's get to couple of the others. So this is the Haho mask and as you can see there's slight variation in color balance between the Nemesin and the other two. These two read similar. Um, I must say when I was writing on it this one I like the way this one wrote on the Rhodia paper as, as composed to the coloring and the Nimesin. Um, I don't have any Nimesin paper that I particularly write on. I probably should change this card to an MD paper because I swatch a lot of stuff on MD. I probably will do that. But for right now, this one looks slightly different in coloration than these two. This one came off the darkest, I think, of the three. All right. Next up is the Ong Bridge. And the Ong Bridge, remember, is that um, is the chroma chromatic one that shows up. The chromatic showed up most brilliantly on the Rhodia paper. You can see see how that shines so beautifully. Um, and I particularly took my Q-tip and put extra at the top so I can get what that, this paper did. But these two didn't show up as much. I do love the color on this paper that shows up in writing than these two papers. Um, it's interesting that this was the first one. I always write this one first. And you would think I wrote this one first with the laying down of color. But this is the one I wrote on first, which is interesting. Yeah, I like this color. Um, I'm not seeing, I'm trying to see if there's, if the writing shows anything. The writing really doesn't show up with this color in there. It's beautiful. I absolutely, I think I amend from when I first watched to now. I actually like the color. It's a purpley blue that shows up more than the more than the, the um, it looked just kind of bland and blue here. But on the Rhodia paper, which I do use, it shows up beautifully. Alrighty, that's those three. Next up is one that I'm not a fan of at all. And there's certain properties with this particular um, ink that I don't like. I must have inked up my nib, and this is this is the nib I'm using, remember. 
I must have inked up this nib three or four times just writing that. And each one had the same problem. I ran out at, the, at, at uh, no. I ran out here and I couldn't be bothered to dip the nib again. Um, when I swabbed here with the Q-tip, the Q-tip was saturated with, it was just full of ink, but not much came out in each of them. This most likely is not a color I will use. It will go into my giveaway pile because I, I'm just not drawn to it. It just, it, it, it just sits there and it doesn't do anything. And I actually want my inks to, to entice me, to make me feel good about writing with them. And this, I did not. It, it almost like um, it dried on the nib really quickly. So the grooves in the, um, the grooves couldn't hold the color. And it just was not a fan. Absolutely was not a fan. But this one, oh my word, look at this. I love this color. I love how rich it is. I love how um, how it laid down. This all of this wording was written with one dip, one dip in the color. I'm I'm just I'm not understanding how inks across a line have such varying properties, like this one. This particular one took three or four dips just to get those words. One dip wrote everything here. How is that possible across um, the same ink? The only difference, well, this probably go a lot more going into it, the properties of the ink to get to the color. But the only difference that I can see is the color. Anyway, in terms of the color, um, I love it absolutely love how rich it is, how beautiful it is, how it lays down. Um, I'm not liking that much, but these two, I love how the color lay down when writing. So gorgeous. I mean, literally gorgeous. This is the only one which is interesting. This is the only one that I wish had a shimmer in it, because I think a shimmer would just like knock this ink color out of the park. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The next one is this interesting, interesting color that is, um, it's a blue-black color. And I like it, and then I don't like it. And then I like it, so I love, I like it here. I love how it, this is beautifully lots of rich color. I like it here. I'm not so much a fan of it on these swatch, pack, swatch pieces of paper. Um, I don't know what to do with that. I really don't know what to do with that information. I'm excited about putting it in an ink. Um, I'm not, a, most of you know by now, um, I am not a fan of writing with black ink. And this reads black, but it doesn't. So that's why I'm going to put it in a in a um, in a pen, because I think it's I actually think it's a nice color. It's a good, strong color. Um, you don't use. I was running out of running out of ink on the on the nib here, and you you still don't lose the color. Even though this is light, you can still read what's there. I like. I I actually do like this color. In the beginning, it didn't. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of Diamine Inkvent Astral without the shimmer, because I think Astral has a beautiful green shimmer. This, that's what this reminds me of. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And the last one, the Sailor Dipton. This is the one that you can see, and you can see it in the in the writing, especially on these two. Let's see if I can get the. You can see the shimmer. I don't know if it's showing up. Yes. It's so gorgeous. I'm glad I got this color. Um, what are the other two colors that were possible? The other two colors were possible were Ice Dance, which I'm assuming is a blue, and a Mellow Forest, which I'm assuming is a green. So it makes me want to go and see what those two look like. Um, will I use this in 
a journal. I think I will. It's enough color in it, on it, that shows up that um, I can see my writing. That's kind of like the criteria. If I cannot see my writing, um, like, like this one, again, I'm going back to this one. If I cannot see my writing, I'm not going to write with it. And I want to be able to read what I wrote, basically. So, yeah, I'm kind of liking, I love how the shimmer is showing up. Oh, look at that. This is just gorgeousness. And, that, and again, as I said, in the, um, you could definitely see it in the writing. I never know which way. I keep doing it long enough so that the camera will pick up or the light reflecting will pick it up. I'm hoping it picked it up. Beautiful, beautiful shimmer. Okay, you get to be showing off too. This actually is very nice. Alrighty, that's it, that's it. So, there you go. That is what we have for, I put that in there so that when I close the book, anyway, that is Ink Flight number 85 for January. I, I like, let me open that just a touch. I like the colors. Um, it's interesting. This one is the one that's kind of like, and you remember Ink Flight something or the other, um, Pannonia. Pannonia was the ink that I did not. This is, this is um, Pannonia Ink Lab 18 was the ink I just didn't like when it comes. This ink I love now because it's inked up in my Leonardo. I absolutely love that ink now. So this might grow on me. I am not a fan of this lighter ink. It might grow on me. There you go. Okay. Ink Flight 85 done in the bag. Let's go.